Hello, I'm going to explain the last question or a variation of the question. You may or may not have this question, but here it goes. In an experiment, a fair coin is tossed eight times and the face H or T that appears for each toss is recorded. The question is as follows. How many elements of the sample space will start or end or both with a tail and have an adjacent pair or adjacent triple of tails and include a total of three tails? Oops. Tails. So let's examine this question and there's three separate cases. Uh, case one. Case one can be the case where we start with a T, a tail, and not end with a tail. So, for example, we have, we start with a tail, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces afterwards. And we're definitely not ending with a tail, so of my sequence of length eight, it starts with a T and ends with an H. So they're all going to look like this. So the question is, how many can we have that look like that? So, um... We can imagine that we can have, say, we have two t's, one t, well, a triple of t's, triple t's, and then the rest are h's, the other five. This can happen in one way. Or we can have a t here. followed by an H. And now I know I have how many slots left? Six slots. But we're saying we're not ending with a tail, so it must end with a head. So now, what are our choices for these five slots? I need to have an adjacent TT. So there are four ways to place TT adjacently. And there's a third case. What if we have two tails that are a pair, and we know we just have a pair, and then there's five slots left, one, two, three, four, five. And we know we're not ending with a tail, so it's ending with a head here. And there are how many ways to place the remaining tail that must be required in these four spots? There are four ways to place one T, or place the remaining tail. So all together we have nine ways, nine possible sequences. But that's only case one. Case two would be if we end, start, end with a T and not start with a T. I should call it T. Um, <clears throat> so we're looking at, if we're not starting with a T, then we're starting with something that looks like that. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slots. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so we're ending with a T. So we're counting all the ways that look like that. And this is similar to case one, so I leave it to you to think about, leave it to you to think about. And then we add all the number of ways here to the number nine. So now in the final case is case three, where we start with a T and, and end with a T. So these will look like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I leave this to you to think about too, but we're placing another T here. We have to have an adjacent pair. We cannot have an adjacent triple, but this I leave it to you 
to think about. How, about how many ways we can have case three. So we add the number of ways we have case one to the number of ways we have case two to the number of ways we have case three and we sum those up and that's how many, that will be the answer to the question of how many elements of the sample space will satisfy all of these conditions. Okay, and that's it. This is my first recording ever. Is that how it goes? Now what do I do? Um, oh, I guess I can say bye-bye. How do I end the recording? Stop recording. Stop recording. Yes, you're my guinea pig for my first recording. Um...